On Photography is a series of conversations with contemporary image makers, critics, gallery directors, and theoreticians. I'd like to welcome you all to the uh, VASA uh, On Photography series. The On Photography series is a series of interviews, conversations with photographers, critics, filmmakers, historian, and theorists. Um, today we're, we're having a conversation with Judith Rodriguez, who is in Buenos Aires, Argentina, right now. Hi, Judith. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, okay. Uh, hey, how, uh, we're curious, uh, how is the virus doing down in uh, Argentina? We are under a strict quarantine here. They are opening it little by little. So luckily it has not had so, uh, such an impact yet. But uh, cases are increasing day by day, uh, especially in, in slums, you know, mm -hmm. because people in slums live perhaps uh, two families or 15 people in one room sharing a bathroom. So, yeah, and one gets infected, all of them get infected, you know. So it's a terrible situation, mostly there. So yeah. the cases are increasing day by day, but. Mm -hmm. We have a, a good government who is taking care of people, luckily, yeah. and uh, they are uh, taking the measures to prevent that there is for spreading more. <laughs> so that's yeah, that's pretty much what's happening globally. The poor are getting hit pretty hard. I'm in Rome, Italy, and we're just coming out of quarantine. So tell you what, let's move on and talk about your work. Um, Let's, you said you will share your screen with us and walk you through some of your photographs, and then we'll have a conversation after that, okay? Okay, so perhaps I can show you some of my street work, you know? Mm -hmm. First, it, that it's about, I mostly do street portraits. I have some other work too. But what, what moves me more is to make portraits in the street in black and white. And this is a series I showed in the Congress of Nations here in Buenos Aires uh, for the Women's Day, you know? Yes, the, uh, I start with a self-portrait because this is a, like a kind of homage to women, you know? Mm -hmm. So the, the first one is, uh, I, I think that every woman is part of me, of all the women I show. So that's why I start with a self-portrait, you know. These were taken in the streets all over the world. This was taken in Chile, in Argentina, Buenos Aires, also. I'm going too fast. This is a good speed. Okay. Now these are people you just meet on the street and you ask the, if you can photograph them. Pardon? These are people you just meet on the street and you yes. ask if you can photograph them. Yes, they are unknown people. I stalk them, I tell them I'm a photographer. I'm, uh, and I, I make street portraits, and most of them say yes to me, you know? Mm -hmm. And perhaps they, they want to see the photo later, so I give them my email address, they write to me, and I send them the photo. Some of these have like plain backgrounds. Do you bring? Uh, yes. I choose the background, you know. Mm -hmm. I try to, to, yes, and the light also. I try to, to stand in the street, I stop in the street, uh, and I choose the place and wait for people, interesting people, to walk by. Or if I meet someone when I'm walking, I try to look for a, a good background, you know, I think it's, it's very important for me. Mm -hmm. Mother and her daughter.
This is in Barcelona. Okay, that's the end. Okay, do you have like a conversation with the people well, you photograph? Do you talk with them for a while? What What do you do? It all depends. Sometimes I do uh, conversate with them. And sometimes we, I have made friends in this way, you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes they want to see the, the photo and then they come to my exhibits and then we go on talking. But sometimes I just, it's just a 30, minute, 30 second encounter when we meet. I take the photo and they go away and they are not interested in any, anything else. They, they are not interested in seeing the photo later. So? Yeah. Do, they, do they ever ask why you're taking the picture? Yes, most, in most cases, you know. And it's very important to have uh, an answer for that. Sometimes I don't have the answer. It's just the light, it's it just the, the encounter, something that uh, the aura, do you say aura? Aura? Mm -hmm. Aura? Yes. Something that moves me out of that people or person. Uh, but I always have to say something because otherwise they would say, what did she say seeing me? <laughs> So yeah. I try to, yes, I try to say, I love your eyes. I love the color of your hair, although it's black and white then. <laughs> or I, I have an answer, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let's stop. Not, sure. not at least I know why. It's just something that it's the, the, the drive, you know. Do they ever ask what's going to happen to their image? Yes, in most cases. And I say exhibits, perhaps, and they they say, ah, where where am I going to be? <laughs> Talking about this uh, moment of time that I stopped to talk to them, I have another series which is called Thirty Seconds, mm -hmm. uh, nearly set thirty seconds, because it's the time the trains stop in the station in subways, you know. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're also an educated psychologist, right? Yes, I am. Yeah, and you're. you I'm working in Zoom now because we cannot have present in present encounters. Mm -hmm. People here. So one of the questions we'll come back to later is the impact in your photography because of your psychological your training, your therapist training. Pardon? My what? English is not very good, you know. Yeah, and my Spanish is non-existent. So, uh, <laughs> so no, one, one of the interesting points about your work, and I should note to the viewers that uh, Judith had an exhibition in 2018 on VASA, which is completely archived. Um, so you can go and look at that under the exhibition drop down menu. Um, but basically, I, I'm curious as to how your, your education in psychology, your, your placement as a, as a therapist has impacted your photography? Well, you know, I'm interested in people, in knowing people, meeting people, and that's why I take portraits, I think. But you know, it, they have many things in common because when, when a patient speaks, uh, all his st history is included in what he says. It's not necessary to only to retell your history or story, Ivan. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. But when you talk, you are story. You are your own story. You know, is this clear? Yes. So uh, I think that when I meet somebody and I take a photo, all his life in it is in his photo also. But it's visual. When when I meet my patients, the relationship is with words and with people I meet, I try to say their stories with images. Would, would you say that you are giving them a voice through their images? And? Would you say that you are giving them a voice yes, through their images? Yes, I mean that. I mean that. 
Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. And it's in now and here, you know, in the photos. It's just that period of time. One, I took a photo of a, of a woman in Valparaíso, Chile, and uh, I, 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 it was in the, in the group of photos I showed you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I loved the photo and I loved the woman. And later on, two years later, I met that old woman in the street again. And I tried to take her another photo and it was not that photo, you know, because mm -hmm. it was, that means that the, the now and here is the now and here of photography that you know something of that person in that cut part of time, you know? Yeah. Will All you the history is there. Will you show us another body of work? Yes, of course. Let's, let's shift to that and continue our conversation. Let's see. Now that you become an expert in screen sharing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's here. Yes, it's here. There. This, this is the 30 second series, you know? Mm -hmm. These are the, the motormen of subways. So I have only 30 seconds approximately to meet them, to say, hello, I'm a photographer, I want to take your photo. And they have to say yes very quickly and I have to frame the, the picture, take the photo and they go away. This is to show you the, the because you asked me about the relationship with, with the people in the street. Here I have only 30 seconds to make the relationship, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's it. You know, it, it's amazing because I know um, over here in Vienna, when I was living in Vienna and also in the States, um, people would not be that open to have their picture taken because they're more, um, maybe because I'm male, <laughs> okay? But basically because they're very much aware of Instagram and Facebook and people manipulating their image um, you know, and I'm, I think it's when I first saw your work a couple of years ago, back in the States in Wilson at the uh, photo festival there, um, I was really impressed that you could do it so, so seamlessly, so openly with the people on the street. In fact, I watched you work, uh, we're at the, we're at the uh, train station and I was just amazed to yeah. how you would just, people just open up to you, right? Yes, because it's. It's like playing a game, you know? It's like, uh, it, it all depends on how you approach the person. I try to approach them in a way that they will not get scared. I, I try them to trust me, you know? And uh, I, I also, when, when I tell them that I'm going to make an exhibit with their photos, I ask them for permission. I say, if you want to, if you don't want, I just keep the photo or throw it away. So, uh, and as I give them my, my, my email or they give me, I, I will get in contact with them. They know I will not do anything with the photo. I, I have, in Wilson, I, I had a bad experience once, you know, <laughs> because I took a photo of a little girl at church that, uh, but I, I try to people not to smile at the photos because when they smile, Everybody has the same face, you know, smiling like cheese. Or <laughs> so I told the little girl not to smile and she was very beautiful and she didn't smile. But when the, the mother saw the photo in Facebook, because they put the photos in Facebook, then I'm going to tell you why. Mm -hmm. She said, my little girl looks sad because she's not smiling. I want you to throw that picture away and never show it to anybody in the world. <laughs> and she was very angry, you know? So well, of course, I 
threw it away and never showed it again to anybody. <laughs> well, another story you told me was that uh, you showed a photograph to a person and she thought it was terrible of her. She yes. just hated it, right? Why yes. did you tell that story? Yes, because you remember that in Wilson, I had an exhibit uh, outdoors uh, in a, in a, on a very, very big wall, brick wall. And the people, the, the, I showed the people of the town there. So everybody could see themselves. themselves. Mm -hmm. So once I met that lady and she said that she, when she saw her photo, she was <gasps> shocked because nobody had taken her a photo like that. She didn't like it at all because she saw herself, she told me. She, she had seen herself there and she was shocked. She, was, she didn't like what she saw. So she would return every day to see herself and that made her change in many ways, she told me. That's what she told me. Interesting, so it was kind of a self-reflection that she yes. had on yes. herself because of your, your images. I mean, she saw herself as the camera and how you saw her. Yes, yeah. when she told me I didn't like it, I said, oh, my God, what shall I do? Because <laughs> it was there <laughs> before they couldn't remove it. Yeah. But then she said, she, she, she said, thank you. She was very grateful. So well, right? <laughs> Brave. Yeah, I, think it's, I think it's interesting, especially what, what's happening with Instagram and all the selfies and all that that's occurring right now. Um, that people, when they begin to look at a picture of themselves, they see, they objectify themselves. They? they objectify themselves. They see themselves as objects to be looked at. And right? it only depends, yes. Yeah, yeah. But in that relationship, it's not just me, but I'm looking at me. Um, and that's, that's, I find that interesting in a, in a way how people begin to see themselves, the self portraits, the self presentation. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know that I think that Facebook is a, a kind of street, you know, a virtual street. Mm -hmm. People walk there in a way. That's interesting. Walk yeah. their eyes, you know, they go and see and, and, and you know. So I think that putting the street portraits back to the street, is, it's a way of putting them in Facebook sometimes. Because that, that's why, do you understand me? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like yeah. Yeah. So how do you go about um, choosing people to photograph? I cannot say that. Something that moves me out of somebody. It's not beauty. It's not awkwardness. It's not... I, 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 I feel something. When, when I meet somebody want to take a, po a photo of, I feel something, you know? It's like, I think that every, uh, that happens to any photographer, that suddenly you see something and you cannot say why you see it. Sometimes I walk in the street with friends and they say, there, you have a person to photograph. And I say, no, it, that's not the person I'd like to photograph. I cannot put it in words, you know? It's like... Yeah, but in your, later on, when you edit your work, yes. I know you don't print or show everything, okay? Uh, it'd yeah. be too much work. I've, I've seen how you work. Um, what, what kind of criteria do you begin to work with the selection of photographs? Now I'm working in a new criteria, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I try to pick up something like hair, for instance. Something typical of the hair. And I make a selection out of that. Would you like to see it? Yes, yes. For instance, okay, but that's edition, you know, because uh, I have around ten thousand portraits. <laughs> you sound like the government now, <laughs> and I'm observing I, people. Yes, so I, I have to do something. So I'm picking up certain aspects, like wait. Here. This is about hair, you know.
Well, I mean, if we begin to look at, it's more than just hair, it's the semiotics of hair. Some? The semiotics of hair. Yeah, the semiotics of hair. Yes, that's a good definition. I will write it down because it's useful. Yes, of course. Because it's how we, how the viewer, and you as the a viewer, once you make the photographs, I'll begin to read the image as for meaning. And your collection is amazing if we just think about hair. Pardon? It's not only hair. Here it's hair. Then I have to, it picked up some other things just to, for addition mm -hmm. things. Of course, it's not hair only. And I'm not going to say hair. I just edited this. But for me, the, the hair begins to tell a story. Yes, that, that's the idea. Yeah. That's that was idea. wonderful. I haven't seen those before. The stories. Yeah. I have not seen those before. Thank you for showing those. Ah. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. So basically, you know, um, you're just out on the streets photographing like a street photographer, selecting people. Um, how do you begin to analyze them? When you, when you select them to be uh, in a book or an exhibition, it's an editorial process. Yes. Yeah. What is some of that process that you go through? It all depends on uh, what kind of publication or exhibition I'm going to do, you know? For instance, for the, the exhibit in Wilson, uh, I, I, I was part of the Ice on Main Street, you know, um, exhibition, the uh, festival. Yes. So I showed my work of the um, residency I did there. So uh, the criteria is to try to pick up, I mean, I, every day I take I can take thousands of photos, you know. So first, I try to uh, see which, which ones of them make me stop when I see them, you know. Mm -hmm. Catch my attention and, and deserves more than a few seconds to be looked at, you know. Well, let me just jump in there. Uh, for the viewer who doesn't know, um, Wilson, uh, North Carolina, has a yearly photo festival yes. that is called Eyes on Main Street. And, yes. what, you know, and what they do is they put all the photographs out on outside of buildings. They have exhibition space outside and some exhibi exhibition space inside. So it's a very interesting uh, exhibition and project, and there's a lot of energy that comes around it. Wilson is a, about an hour drive east of uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And it's a, parts of the town, the downtown, has a lot of empty storefronts and a lot of empty spaces for this. So if you, people might be interested to look at Eyes on Main Street, Wilson, North Carolina, USA, uh, and go from there. But um, yeah, and you know, um, I, hopefully uh, we can begin to show some more of your work um, maybe we'll do another interview down the road and see what else you're doing. Um, so but basically I want to thank you because we're just about out of time with Zoom. You're limited to 40 minutes. Um, and uh, thank you for your time and, and, um, and your learning process to how to share screens. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for you and the VESA projects too. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking part. Okay. okay. Bye-bye. Yeah. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao.